Hello, this is Thomas, K4SWL, and I'm here at uh, Second Creek uh, Game Land um, near Salisbury, North Carolina. Uh, it's basically, this is a kind of a typical uh, small game land where uh, the game land area is out there where there's a designated parking area here. There's only one other car here. You could hear some gunshots and things like that off in the distance, uh, but it's pretty quiet today. It's super, super muddy here. Uh, uh, one thing that <laughs> put activators ought to know is before they go to a game land, they ought to scope it out before they take their car down. I have an all-wheel drive vehicle that I'm very comfortable taking it into really muddy and uh, steep areas. This has a fairly steep little entry point, uh, but it's super muddy down here. And if you had a rear-wheel drive truck, for example, you could slide around quite a bit trying to get it out of here because it is super muddy. Um, but anyway, uh, it's a nice day. Uh, this is my third activation today. I started out the day with doing a, a game land. Did not video that at all. Um, it, there was a really small parking area. I had to pretty much do the activation in the back of the car with the antenna right up against it. It was the uh, Chameleon Impasse Light uh, vertical antenna. Worked out really well. Got 13 contacts and then moved on uh, because that park had a lot of uh, activity. People wanted to park there and I didn't want to be in their way. Had enough time that I went to the North Carolina Transportation Museum, and that was the uh, another video for that um, that I just posted, um, where I did an activation there. That was a lot of fun. Also used the Chameleon Impasse Light. This time, I've got the room, and I decided to use the Chameleon Impasse 2.0 vertical, which um, is much taller than the Impasse Light. I believe it has these fiberglass pole sections here. And um, Chameleon sent this to me to evaluate, and so that's exactly what I'm doing here. I have not used it yet. Uh, this video is my first use of this antenna, uh, period. Um, the bottom part down here, this, uh, I think they call it a hybrid mini or something, the um, uh, sort of the Ballon point or whatever that is, uh, that's the same as with the impasse light, and so is the uh, stainless steel stake. And in fact, I use the exact same counterpoise uh, for the impasse light because I figure if that counterpoise is um, pairing with the ground, uh, it doesn't really matter if it's uh, the same length. And then I just have a cable line coming up here to my station, which is just basically behind my car. There's a road up here. Um, it's, this is surrounded by pasture land. Um, but it's a nice sight. It is very, very sunny. So I'm not sure how easy it's gonna be to see everything here today, but we'll give it a go. Uh, one nice uh, thing I discovered is I actually have internet access out here with my mobile internet. So I should be able to uh, spot myself on the PODA network if uh, it's not doing it automatically. Um, I've prepared my logs here to do by hand. I'll start out with CW just so it can auto spot me and hopefully it'll do it correctly um, uh, with my schedule and everything. Uh, I did one other park today that was scheduled and uh, sometimes the POTA system can get a little confused if you have two parks one after another. Uh, it'll spot you at the previous park, but I think this one there's enough space in between them. It should be okay. It's my third park for the day. I need to do this one fairly quickly and then move on. I need to get back and uh, help my parents with some projects uh, around their house. Uh, so uh, we'll make this pretty quick. I'm doing something a little different today. I'm gonna start on 20 meters uh, because that's where I was last time. And I was about to say that I hadn't heard anybody on this frequency, but then someone just started right now. That's okay. We'll move off of kilohertz. I haven't seen anyone here. So, um, the Matt Tuner... I had just tuned up. Okay. I was going to say, I was going to send QRL. Uh, the Matt Tuner uh, is fully engaged. I actually didn't go through a full process of telling it to tune up. I think it knows now when it's connected up to the uh, 705 it's ready to go uh, so all i had to do is just touch my key as you saw here and it tuned up just fine and so this is the first time using the impasse uh 2.0 let's see if anyone's on frequency um what i'm doing there is sending qrl question mark which basically asks if anyone's on frequency if i did this with phone or signal sideband um, I would uh, just ask, is this frequency in use? Okay, let's go ahead and give this a go. So I'm using my memory keyer in beacon mode.
We'll see if we get anybody. As I do uh, with a lot of my activations, I have my, if I'm bringing out the table, I'll usually bring my um, Microsoft Surface Go tablet slash laptop and log with it I using N3FJP's logging software, which I really, really love for its simplicity and how nicely it kind of saves files as it goes along using the ICOM IC7305, uh, um, the uh, Matt Tuner MAT705 Plus uh, ATU. This is the new improved version of the MAT705. Uh, not the original, which I wasn't too crazy about. This one I like much better. Um, you can read my review, my initial review of this one at uh, qrpr.com. I also have a 3 amp hour BioNO uh, lithium iron phosphate battery that's powering the 705. And then this is the Ham Radio Workbench little project they did once, which is a, a DC distribution panel uh, for Anderson power pole connectors. And I like using it when I can. Okay, I thought it was an N. I've worked him before. Minnesota. So I'll use my memory for that. Uh, so I've got one uh, Minnesota, one New Hampshire station, pretty quickly, so I know that it is spotting me on the network. Go ahead and call CQ again. Oh, we're in the path of a, I guess of a, I'm trying to think of what air, Thank you. 
Oops. <laughs> Didn't mean to jump in on top of them. Some Rhode Island. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, I got, we must be in the flight path. I, I'm trying to think of what airport around here other than Charlotte uh, that uh, we may be, but those, that was pretty, pretty close to here. Okay, let's see. I think I got that right. Oh yeah, I've, I got, oh hang on one second. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm an amateur radio operator. I, what are you looking for? I'm an amateur radio operator. I you might have some oh no. Yeah, no, not that important. It's <laughs> just doing a little Morse code actually. Uh, oh, you're not bothering me at all. <laughs> yeah. He's got a neighbor that walks around. Don't open it. Don't open it. Uh, in her neighborhood. And he walks around with his horse coat running all the time. You can hear him coming down the road. <laughs> he's got it. He's got it in his pocket. Oh, I bet. I bet. <laughs> he said it's all random stuff. Like yeah. Yeah. Kind of hey, you take care now. So that was that was another New Hampshire. So that was uh, just a fellow out here with his wife, and they were uh, walking with their dogs and hunting. So I hope I wasn't yelling at the camera there. This is something that happens a lot. Um, I'm in the field and people come over and usually they'll ask me about what I'm doing. They'll hear um, Morse code and that's not something people are used to hearing. Um, and so they'll ask me about it and I'm, I get terribly distracted. I, I have a friend, uh, Vlado, M3CZ, um, great guy, and he can do Morse code in one hand and talk to somebody uh, while he's doing it, and I, I am not like that. I just don't have that kind of uh, command of uh, Morse code, and my brain is not a multitasking brain. Uh, so, <laughs> so even though W2NR was pretty easy to copy, uh, I just um, uh, couldn't do that and talk to them at the same time. And in fact, what I did was I sent him AS, da 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 da, -da which usually kind of means, uh, hang on a second. Um, because I knew that it would probably take me a while to 
Uh, catch up there. Okay, yeah, good. Um, so I've got six contacts so far. Um, let's see, all the way from Rhode Island, Kansas, New Hampshire, Alaska. Um, so I've gotten some great contacts with 10 watts and the uh, Impasse 2.0. So far, very, very pleased with that antenna. I tell you what, it's uh, it's a nice looking antenna. Um, it's super rugged. The um, fiberglass sections are dense and uh, uh, it was easy to put together. It's just really nice. We'll wait here for a second. If I don't hear anybody, I'm going to move down to 40 meters and we'll tune up and make sure that uh, this can match the uh, antenna. Let's go ahead and do that because I don't want to be on here too long today. Okay, we'll wait around just a second. I'll mark in my logs. I've moved to 40 meters. And let's see here. I don't hear anybody. I'm going to. Oh, got about a one-to-one, -one. so excellent match. Let's go ahead and call CQ. Now I'll tell my log over here to move to 40 meters CW. So the fellow that talked to me just a minute ago, he thought I had um, a uh, radio device for finding my dogs, um, as if, if I had hunting dogs, uh, because a lot of them have RF trackers on them. Um, I've never seen anybody use an antenna this large for, um, you know, doing that, but, um, again, I, I'm not a, I'm not a hunter, uh, so I don't really know, but again, there's what we're looking at. Very nice. I like how, so it's in two sections. There's this thicker section down here, and then there's a section up at the top. All of those expand. They, they're like tent poles, like fiberglass tent poles. They kind of all pop together and they have a elastic thing in between them. And it works really well. Let's see if the, I think I've got my internet going here. I'll see if I've gotten spotted yet. I haven't gotten spotted yet on 40 meters. He's in Tennessee, uh, which is not too surprising on the 40 meter band. And I got him, I think, at a previous park, um, K4OCY.
sometimes I get a little mixed up when I hear S's, I hear H's. Um, with this one, I was having some, I was mixing up my D and my G for some reason. No good reason. Uh, just how my brain works sometimes. Uh, <laughs> Jerry, okay. Mississippi. Or Michigan, what am I saying, Mississippi? <laughs> is H. Da, 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 da. So yeah, I messed up his call sign uh, before that. He actually sent an H instead of an S. And, um, but I'm kind of, I don't know why G's and D's get mixed up in my head. Um, H's and uh, S's do, of course. I mean, three dits and four dits sometimes sound the same. Z's sometimes catch me off guard because they're just not used quite as much. Um, P is my 10th, so I have a valid activation. And he's in Illinois. He's not actually, he's not actually 599. He's not actually 599 that I messed up, but then I didn't want to go back and correct his um, signal report. He's in Los Louisiana, he or she. Sometimes I get a little mixed up with that call because they follow up with a K. Uh, not a lot of people do that anymore, but sometimes I'll think it's AA5UZK. I've done, I've done that with other people too. Woo.
Okay, it's an N. K3MRK. Pennsylvania. I need to flip over my pages now. Because I know there's another call here waiting because I heard him before. And there's another call in there somewhere I'll have to get. Let's see. There we go. <laughs> okay. Got two calls that time. XLS in there as well. I'm not often that great. When you have a pile up, you let your, I just let my brain, let me see. I just let my brain relax and try to hear what I can hear. Um, I just let my brain relax and just try to hear something out of it. And I, any letter combination I find or number combination, I, I just um, send that back to them. So if I only heard LS in his call, I would send an LS and a question mark. And that's pretty good because when he hears me, he'll know that I was trying to call him and he'll give me his full call. So I've got a total of 16 contacts right now. Thought I heard somebody else in there. So since I've got 16 and since I'm in a hurry, I probably will not move to voice. Well, you know what? I'll make this my last call. Okay. 
New York. So if you, one thing I was going to say earlier, <laughs> if I can get this out before somebody finishes here, but okay. W2NR? And I worked him earlier on the 20 meter band in this same thing. You probably heard me write his call, or heard his call earlier. Um, but in Parks on the Air, each time, each mode and each band count separately. some QRM. Okay, before anybody does anything, I am going to move, let's move down here to, see if anybody's on 7188 real quick. Um, I don't see anybody activating 7188 right now. This is a luxury being able to look here and see. So, I don't hear anybody making noise, so let's uh, plug in the mic. And when I plug it in, it'll trigger it as a PTT probably, and the tuner will uh, tune it. Let's see. Yeah, it did. Okay. And what I'll do is start sending CQ Poda. Well, is this frequency in use? This is K4SWL. It doesn't look like it's in use though. Is this frequency in use? This is K4SWL. Oh, wait. <laughs> That's right. I have to switch this to voice to get my voice memory. So now it's calling CQ. While it's calling CQ, I'm going to go on to the Poda website and uh, re-spot myself on the right band. And hopefully we'll make some contacts here in single sideband. I'm doing this for you guys because <laughs> normally I'd probably just move on, but this will be kind of fun to see if I can get some people. and. Hey, I'm using a new antenna and transceiver combination and ATU combination here. So let's just see how this works, okay? If you watched my last video, you'll notice a huge difference in noise here. Way less noise on the bands. You know, and I may call CQ next time. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, this is Kilo 4, Sugar Whiskey Lima calling CQ for Parks on the Air. People always say something to me when I use sugar instead of Sierra. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, this is Kilo 4, Sierra Whiskey Lima calling CQ for Parks on the Air. And it's true, you should use, you know, correct phonetics. I'm just so used to saying sugar that I do it sometimes. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, this is Kilo 4, Sierra Whiskey Lima calling CQ for Parks on the Air. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, this is Kilo 4, Sierra Whiskey Lima calling CQ for Parks on the Air. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, this is Kilo 4, Sierra Whiskey Lima calling CQ for Parks on the Air. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, this is Kilo 4, Sierra Whiskey Lima calling CQ for Parks on the Air.
CQ Poda, CQ Poda, this is Kilo 4, Sierra Whiskey Lima calling CQ for Parks on the Air. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, this is Kilo 4, Sierra Whiskey Lima calling CQ for Parks on the Air. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, this is Kilo 4, Sierra Whiskey Lima calling CQ for Parks on the Air. Kilo 8, Romeo Delta Golf, uh, thank you very much for the contact here today, my friend. Uh, you're about a 5x6, about a 5x6 at park number 6950, QSL? Uh, QSL to 6950, I have you 5-3 in Michigan, 5-3 Mike India, thanks for activating, Happy New Year. Hey, Happy New Year to you, and thank you very much for the contact, my friend. Uh, it's always fun coming out here and doing this anyway. <laughs> Seven threes and Happy New Year, QRZ, this is Kilo 4, Sugar Whiskey Lima for Parks on the Air. Okay, we might have this, call CQ. Whoops, maybe someone just called. Let's see. Oh, I'm hearing somebody come up on this frequency. That's what I'm hearing. You know what I'll do? I'll use this as an opportunity to hunt. Um, since I've got internet access, I'm gonna try to work some park-to-park -park stations. We'll see how successful this is. So I'm looking here on my website and I can see, or on the um, POTA website, and I can see that, uh, oh, and by the way, you may notice I have uh, Blaze Orange on. Anytime I'm at a game land, I wear Blaze Orange. <laughs> you should too, uh, frankly. Um, frankly, it's, um, some, some require it, some states require it. Um, but you're kind of foolish if you don't because people are walking around with guns looking for movement. And if you get an inexperienced person, you know, you could get shot. You don't want to get shot. Okay, now what I'm going to do is move off frequency a little bit. And I knew it was going to do that. I, I knew it would go through a tuning cycle. So I moved off frequency a bit in between. See, there's supposed to be someone on 72. Well, 72.43, yeah. Here's somebody very faintly in there. Supposed to be someone on 7200. That's a brave person, because that's a crazy band. That's a crazy frequency sometimes. Okay, I've had a bunch of would do that. Kilo 4, Sierra Whiskey Lima, park to park. Kilo 4, Sierra Whiskey Lima, Kilo 4, Sierra Whiskey Lima, park to park, park to park. Just a little too weak, I think. Kilo 4, Sierra Whiskey Lima, park to park, park to park. The Victor Echo 9, Mike Yankee, Malt. See, the problem is um, I'm operating QRP here. Single sideband. Let's try Davy Crockett State Park, 7262. Normally I'd hang around for a while and try to work him, but I'm in a hurry. Okay, that's a strong station, so I'll move off frequency a little bit. I don't want to tune up on top of him. Okay, that's K4LEN. He's strong enough, I can probably work him, I hope. You can't always assume that, but let's try. USL, uh, stop at the 5-9 South Carolina. 
QRP station is working good. Uh, thank you for being there in 73. Kilo 4 is Sierra Whiskey Lima parked apart. Uh, station down in my noise, uh, something 4 Sierra something. That's Kilo 4, Sierra Whiskey Lima. Kilo 4, Sierra Whiskey Lima. Park to park, park to park. All right. Kilo 4, Sierra Whiskey Lima. QSL? Roger, roger, my friend. And I am at park number 6950, 6950 in North Carolina. QSL? All right, I've got you at uh, 6950. Uh, I didn't catch my signal report, but you're about a 2x2 two two. here in the Tennessee in the two parts. Roger, roger, my friend, and you are about a 5x7, five 5x7, seven, five seven, QSL? All right, I copied 5x7. Uh, do you have both of my part numbers? Um, I do not. Do you mind giving them to me real quick? Roger, roger. I copy Kilo 2941 and Kilo 3791. Hey, thank you very much, my friend. And 73 is great to work you today and enjoy the rest of your activation. Happy New Year. All right. Thank you for being there. Good luck with your activation as well. K4 LEN, parts on the air. Okay, so um, I'm probably going to end it here. Actually, I need to move on. And I've got a total of 20, uh, 20 logged. If I sat out here another hour, I could rack up probably another 20 or so, uh, but I'm not going to do that today. I need to move on. Um, one thing I'll, I'll note here, uh, K4LEN said that he's actually got two parks. Now, um, sometimes people get a little confused by this. Um, so uh, today I worked multiple parks. I worked here at um, uh, Second Creek Game Land, and earlier I worked also at... Um, uh, what was the name of it? Uh, Perkins uh, State Game Land. Um, and I worked the North Carolina Transportation Museum. So it's three parks. Now that is just called multiples in one day. Um, another thing that people do is they'll have two furs or three furs. And what those are are overlapping park entities. So, for example, this is not the case in this, you know, in this particular case, but it is the case um, up where I live in the mountains that sometimes uh, game land and a national park will actually overlap. And when they do that, then you actually have two parks um, that you can, uh, when someone works you, they're actually working two parks at a time. And it's called a twofer. Sometimes you'll have three entities that overlap. I've never had one of those, I don't think. But um, sometimes, I think around Washington, D.C. especially, you'll have overlapping national parks and things, and they can work three parks at a time, which is kind of cool. Um, so uh, multiples, we usually when people say they're, you know, they're going to uh, do multiple park activations, that just means they're going to do one after the other. A two for or a three for means at one site they're actually doing two. And actually the closest park to me is a two for, uh, which is kind of nice. I don't actually go to it as often as I should. If I wanted to rack up numbers, that would be a great way to do it because it would basically double my count every time I uh, go there. I'd be working two instead of one park. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, this isn't for everyone, I know. Uh, this is a real-time, real-life uh, video. You've been sitting with me here as I did this activation with uh, some brand new equipment uh, I haven't tried before. And, um, uh, you know, worked some stations and uh, had a good time. So, uh, um, if you like this, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to check out, I'll, I'll actually write up a full report of this on qrp.com uh, probably tonight or tomorrow and include these videos if I can get them uploaded in time. And uh, anyway, seven threes. And until the next time, if you've got any questions, feel free to comment down below and I'll try to do my best to answer them. Again, I'm not a pro at this, I'm just kind of a normal uh, operator, uh, but uh, can, I'm happy to share my experience if I can. Uh, seven threes.